left today. Channel Tana today we will finish off chapter 11 and begin chapter 12. Right. So before we finish off the last couple of exercises, just a quick refresher as to what we introduced last week in terms of the conjugation of verbs. You would recall we did past tense verbs many lessons ago, then a few lessons ago, we started with present tense verbs. And we said, when we're learning a verb, we need to learn the past tense as well as the present tense, right? So for example, we learn the verb, dakhala. We need to learn dakhala, which is past tense, together with the present tense, yadakhulu. What is the reason, anybody could tell me why we need to learn the present tense together with the past tense verb, for any given verb. Anybody can tell me why we need to learn it together? What's your reason for that? Yeah, for the conjugation. For the conjugation, right. Well, what way, in spe what way specifically? You're looking for a specific answer. Why can't we just learn the pattern and use that for any verb? Meaning learn the pattern changes. Hmm? So we're talking about past tense and present tense verbs here. We're not looking at master X. Past tense verb, present tense verb. Why do we need to learn them together? Because the irregular no. Anybody else? Anybody wanted to make a try again? Why are we learn the past tense verb together with the present tense verb? So as I said, for example, we learn dakhala, we need to learn yadakulu. Dakhala, yadakulu. And once we learn these two, then we can apply the patterns for past tense verbs and for the present tense verbs. Apply the patterns from there and get the different conjugations. But these two, we need to learn them together. The reason is the present tense verb, the middle letter can take pata damo orchestra, the middle letter of the original three letters. Okay, remember that? And there's no rule to say this verb takes this vowel in the present tense, in the middle letter. All right, so we have cases of da khala with the middle letter having a fatha in the past tense verb, but when it comes to the present tense verb, it takes a dhamma. Okay, we're speaking specifically about the middle letter here. All right, there are cases where the past tense verb might have kasra on the middle letter, but the present tense verb has fatha on that same middle letter. All right. So this is why we need to learn them together, just for that vowel on the middle letter. We need to learn that, all right? So there's no other way in which you can tell da khala ya da khu lu, the kha and the dhamma. Am the dhamma and the kha, all right? Is, so the only way is to, to memorize it like that, all right? You all understand? So we have that here, da khala ya da khu lu. Dakhala yadukhulu. Okay, then we have kharaja yakhruju. So you see here, kharaja, the ura has a fatha in the past tense, but the present tense, the ura takes a, a dhamma. You all seen that? Mm -hmm. So this is what we said. We need to learn the past tense. Sorry, we need to learn the present tense together with the past tense verb. Because that is how we can tell what vowel the present tense verb will take on the middle letter. Middle here, when I say middle, I refer to the middle letter of the three root letters. 
okay? Three root letters. You all understand me? Because we said so far, we have learned verbs with three letters. Dakhala, Tharaja, Jalasa, Akala, Tharaa, and so on. Rakiba, three letters, okay? Three root letters. Middle one is what we're talking about, all right? And that can take um, different vowels in the present tense form. And there's no given pattern in terms of knowing, okay, this past tense verb will take this vowel on the middle letter in the present tense form. There's no rule for that. You have to learn that for each verb. You need to learn past tense is this, present tense is this. Past tense is this for this other verb, present tense is this for this other verb. Okay? Is that clear with everyone? Anybody don't understand that? Anybody don't understand that? All right. The other thing we said we need to learn with a verb is what we call the verbal noun. The verbal noun, meaning what? From the verb, which is the action, you get a noun from it, which is a thing, all right? Might be an abstract thing, might be a, you know, a concept, but the fact is it is a noun, it's a noun, okay? So this has to be learned together. So when we are learning a verb, there's three things we learn in past tense, present tense, and the masdar, the masdar, okay? Inshallah, after this, the, everything else that comes from a verb will be in the form of patterns. Once we know this type of verb, we apply this pattern. This pattern for the past tense, this pattern for the present tense, and this pattern for the master and so on, right? But you need to learn these three things for each individual verb. Each individual group. So let's go through the table we have here. Some examples of past tense, present tense, and master. Past tense, present tense, and master. So say after me. This is the heading here. Al Mahdi means past tense, right? So say after me. Al Mahdi. Al Mahdi. Al Mahdi. Al Mudari. Al Mudari, Al Mudari, Al Masdar, Al Masdar. All right, let's go through some of the examples of the verbs here. You decide first. Dakh, so say after me. Dakhala, ya dakhulu, dakhulun. Dakhala, ya dakhulu, dakhulun. Dakhala ya dakhulu dakhulun. Dakhala ya dakhulu dakhulun. Kharaja ya khuruju khurujun. Kharaja ya khuruju khurujun. Kharaja ya khuruju khurujun. And you have Jalasa Yajlisu Julusun. Jalasa Yajlisu Julusun. So you notice here, past tense, Dakhala, Fata, 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 then Yadu, Kulu, Domani middle letter. Okay, you all notice that? Second one, Kharaja, Fata, 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 but Yakhruju, Domani. Middle letter. Well seen that? Jalasa, fata, 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 jalasa, then yajli su, kestra, below the lamb. Yajlisu, right? And nazala, yanzilu, yanzilu. That's why we need to learn them together because how would you know it's not um, yajlusu, haraja yakhruju, yakhala yadukhulu. Jalasa yajlusu. One might be tempted to say that, okay? But once we learn them together, we know what is the correct thing, okay? That would be wrong. If you say yajlusu, yajlusu, that the money lamb, that would be wrong. So we have to say jalasa yajlisu. That's why we need to learn the present tense with the, huh? with the past tense. 
Jalasa yet lisu Julusun Nazala yan zilu nuzulun So you all understand the concept of the master, master, verbal noun. So for example, the first verb, dakhala means to enter. Yadukhulu, he enters, right? Present tense. Dukhulun means what? Entry, right? Entry. Then you have kharaja, yakhruju, khurujun. Kharaja, he exited. Yakhruju, he exits, present tense. And khurujun is uh, um, exit, right? Not exit as in place, but that would be um, the noun of place, which is a different pattern we would use. This is exit as in his, his exit cause, you know, uh, problems for the company, meaning him coming out from the company cause problems, right? So that exit is a, is a, is a verbal noun, right? Jalasa yajlisu juluson. Right? He sat, Jalasa, he sat, Yajlisu, he sits, and Julusan is uh, sitting. Right? So then you have Nazala, Yanzilu, Nuzulun. To come down or, or to descend, Yanzilu, right? Uh, he descends. And then you have Nuzulun is the descent, descent, right? So let's look at the next half of the table here. Again, we have Al Madi, Al Mudari, Al Masdaru, Masdaru. Past tense, present tense, and the verbal noun. So say after me, Rakiba, Rakiba, Yarkabu, Rakiba, Yarkabu, Rakiba, Yarkabu. Then you have Rukubun, Rukubun. Right? Rakiba is the to ride, to ride. Okay? He rode Yarkabu. He rides. Rukubun is what? Let me get a mini noun for that. Riding, right? Then you have Sajada. Sajada. Yes, Judu. Sajada, yes, Judu. Sajada, yes, Judu. Sujudun. Sajada, yes, judu, sujudun. Sajada means to make prostration. So he prostrated. Yes, judu, he prostrates, present tense. Sujudun is prostration. Okay. Raka'a, yarka'u, ruku'un. Raka'a. Yarka'u Ruku'un. Right, so this means the to, to bow down, right? He bow down, he bow, bows down, present tense. And then you have Ruku'un means bowing. Sa'ida Yas'adu Su'udun. So see after me, Sa'ida. Yas'adu su'udun. All right. In this case, all of these verbs that they give us here as examples, all of them, it so happens that the master is of the same pattern. I want you all to remember this. Not all verbs will have this pattern for the master. Not all verbs. We don't know what pattern it will take. That's why I mean to learn the master with each verb. So happen this group of verbs 
that the author collected for us in this exercise, all of them have the same pattern for the master. Okay? So you can take a note of that. Any questions on it so far? All right, so we're going on to the next exercise. اقرأ الجمل الآتية وعين المصدر المصدرة الواردة فيها. Read the following sentences and identify or pick out the مصدر that are present in in them in the sentences. Okay. So, because we only learned one type of master, okay, that's what we're looking for. Remember, I said there are other patterns of master, right? Patterns meaning how it is formed from the root letters. I hope you all understand that, right? When you say a pattern or a wasn, you're taking the root letters for each verb. In this case of the dakhala, the root letters will be the dal, the kha, and the lamb, okay? These are the root letters. So we take the root letters and we apply a particular pattern. So in this case, the master of each of these verbs would be the first letter with the dhamma, the second letter with the dhamma, then you add a wow, and then you have the last letter, okay? So dhamma, dhamma, wow, then you put in the last letter, all right? So this is the pattern for all of these verbs as I mentioned. Right? And please remember, I said it about two times already, but I'm saying this again. This has to be learned with each verb because they have different patterns for different verbs. And there's no rule saying this type of verb will carry this type of master. Right? You need to learn it. So let's look um, for this master in the following sentences. I read the following sentences. First one, I know we would have done this exercise last week, but let's go into it over. At least the first two or three, right? I means four, right? So, I am one, right? I have one brother, right? So Li. So that's the lamb there, right? So here you have Li Hadihil Shafilati for this bus Babani. Babani means two doors. Remember, we have a, a noun. All we need to do to make it dual is we add an aleph and a noon. Okay? So if you take out the aleph and a noon from this word, Babani. You will get ba bun. Take out the aleph and nun at the end. You will have ba aleph ba ba bun, right? For ba, which means a door, right? So when you add back the aleph and the nun, you get ba bani, which is two doors. So what are we saying here? We had the khafilati ba bani. For this bus, are two doors. Or in English, we will say this bus has two doors, right? This bus has Two doors. That's the proper English sentence, right? So you see here, you can't think in English to try to formulate an Arabic sentence. That's a mistake a lot of people do. All right? They try to read it, the Arabic sentence and they try to translate it word for word and they find it comes up with a kind of sentence that doesn't make sense in English. All right? Because the sentence structure in Arabic is different from sentence structure in English. So you have to understand the whole phrase or whole sentence and then translate it using the best form of the English sentence structure. Is that clear? So here we have lihadi hil khafilati babani. All right, so it means in English, this bus has two doors, right? Going on to the next part now. Hada this lid duhuli. 
This is for entrance or entering. For entry, sorry. This is for entry. For that, lil khuruji. Right? So this is for entry, that is for exit. Right? For example, mata rajulu, mata rajulu. Also, let be careful here, right? This is where the long vowel is extremely, extremely, extremely important in Arabic. Okay? If we was to say, Mata, what does that mean? Mata, not here. This is not here. What I'm asking is not here in the book. We would have met it many times before. Mata, Mata, Tarjiru Minasuki. Mata, Yarjiru Minasuki. What does Mata mean? Huh? When? When? So when? When does he come back from the market? When does he come back from the masjid? Mata, all right? So in that case, you have the meme, the ta, and the alif maqsura at the end, mata, when. Here we have mata. So where's the alif? Hmm? After the meme, okay? Not after the ta, after the meme. So you have mata, which means he died. He died or he passed away, okay? So it's two different things, right? So, just a change in the long vowel changes the word. And of course, once the word changes, the meaning definitely will change, okay? So, we need to, as English speakers, sometimes, especially as Trinidadians, sometimes we make the vowels long, vowels short, and in English, it doesn't matter too much, right? In English, it doesn't matter too much, but in Arabic, as we see here, it matters, right? So we need to be a little more precise. We need to be a little more precise in how we pronounce the, the words and especially in the vowels, all right? So we have here, mata arrajulu, mata arrajulu, and dai. Ba'da ruju'ihi, after his return. So you have here, the masdar ruju', ruju', right? So we have the verb raja'a, which means to, he returned. Then from raja'a, you get yarji'u, he, return, he returns. And then you have ruju'un, return, right? So mata rajulu ba'da ruju'ihi min al hajji. The man died after his return from hajj. So ruju'un is return, and ruju'ihi is his return, his return, meaning when he came back. Min, uh, min al hajj, from hajj. Everybody with me? So we see the master here being used, rujur, rujurun. Okay, after his return from hajj. So you see here in this particular sentence, um, all right, sorry, I was gonna say something, but I'll save that for later on. Let's look at one more example and then we go on to the next exercise again, right? Um, Yadukhulu at tolabu. So Yadukhulu Yadukhulu tolabu al fasla qabla dukhul al mudarrisi. Right? So Yadukhulu at tolabu. The students entered or enters al fasla the classroom qabla dukhul al mudarrisi before the entry of the mudarris the mudarris okay who is the mudarris the teacher qabla dukhul al mudarris mudarrisi before the entry of the teacher bi khamsi daqaiq daqaiq right um by five minutes. How long before the teacher? Bi khamsi daqaiq. Daqiqa is a minute. Daqaiq, right? Means minutes, minutes. So bi khamsi daqaiq, by five minutes. Wa yakhrujuna, and they leave ba'da khuruji, ba'da khurujihi. 
and they leave after his exit. So we see here, Dukhul is a Masdar and Khuruj is also a Masdar. So you, you see how through these sentences, you have an appreciation how the Masdar is used, all right? And we see more or less a similar thing in English, right? So the sentence as a whole, Ya Dukhulu Tulabu Al-Fasla Qabla Dukhul Al-Mudarrisi Bikhamsi Daqaiqa the students enter the classroom before the entry of the teacher by five minutes and they leave after his exit they leave after his exit so you all understand the master inshallah then we went on after that to the usage of amma amma which we said is used, uh, it means an as for, an as for. So we are listing two things, or more than two things. You say, as for this, then so and so and so happen. And as for that person or thing, then so and so happen. So it's a, a, it's a part of a, it's a way of speaking, right? When you're talking about different issues or, or things or persons. So they gave us a few examples here to see how it has been applied. And of course, we said that when we use amma, we have to use fa. Amma hada fa huwa so and so. So amma goes with what? Fa. Amma goes with? Fa. All right. So say after me. Aina taskununa. Aina Taskununa. Where do you all it's plural, right? Where do you all live? The answer is Ikwati Yaskununa Fi Mahaji Al Jamiati. Amma Anna. فَأَسْكُنُوا مَعَ قَرِيبٍ لِي So we see the amma being used with the Alright, this um, yeah, we have no trouble here to highlight, so we see. Alright, so, so. See if we can see it here. All right, so you have Amma together with the Fa on the line it in red. Okay, Amma and Fa. So Amma Anna Fa Askunu Ma Kalibin Li. So this is a, a way of structuring sentences. All right, so let's go through a few more examples. I know we did this last time. We're just gonna go through it again, inshallah, just for emphasis, all right? All right, next one. Atarifu al inkal inkiliziyati inkiliziyata wal faransiyata jayidan ya hamidu amma amma al inkiliziyatu فَأَعْرِفُهَا جَيِّدًا So you see here the Amma and you have the Fa. Amma al-Inkilisiyyatu فَأَعْرِفُهَا جَيِّدًا As for English, so or therefore or then I know it well. وَأَمَّا Then here Amma وَأَمَّا ال so you see here amma and the fa amma and the fa again right and as for french so i studied it many years ago but i forgot it now Forgot it now. Okay. 
So you see here the fa and the amdi. Fa goes with the amma. So let's look at some of the let's look at some of the um, questions they gave us here. So it's a question, and we have to answer it using the the structure. All right. So I'll try the first one, and I want some volunteers to do the others. It's very easy. Amma, and anything we're talking about, then you use the fa, and you use a pronoun to refer back to that thing, All right? So let's let's see how we do it in this example, right? Aina al mustashfa wa aina maktabul baridi. Where is the hospital and where is the post office? We did this last week, but we do it as a refresher again, right? Where is the hospital and where is the post office? So the answer is Ammal Mustashfa. Again, so we, what, what is the pattern we use it? Amma, the only thing, the first thing we're talking about. So we're talking about firstly the hospital. So you say Amma Al Mustashfa, Ammal Mustashfa, then we say the Fa. Okay, Fa, Hua Amama, the Kal Masjidi. Uh, who are refers back to the mustashfa, right? Then you go on to the second part. We say wa wa amma al wa amma maktabul baridi. As for the post office, fa huwa qaribun min asuki. You see that? So what do you put in the space there? Amma. The thing we're talking about, then fa, and then the pronoun hua or hia, as the case may be, referring back to that thing. All right, let's look at the other example here. Let's have two examples again. في أي كلية تدرس يدرس حامد حامد وعثمان. In which faculty does Hamid and Osman study? In which faculty does Hamid and Osman study? So say after me, Fi Ayi. Fi Ayi. Kuliyatin. Adurusu. Hamidun wa Osman. Hamidun wa Osman. Fi Ayi. Kuliyatin. Yadurusu. Hamidun wa Osman. So we're using the pattern here, amma and fa. Okay. So we start off with amma hamidun. As for hamid, fa. Huwa fi kulliyati tijarati. You see the answer there below, right? Amma hamidun. Fa huwa fi kulliyati tijarati. You all see that? Then you continue the next part. Wa amma Uthmanu fahua. So we have the fa here to go with the amma. You all with me? Then you have the hua to refer back to who? Uthman. Wa amma Uthmanu fahua fi kulliyati tibbi. And as for Uthman, so he is in the Faculty of Medicine. All right, so you all say after me, so you can get a little practice, inshallah. Question again. Fi ayi kulliyatin yadrusu hamidun wa uthmanu? Fi ayi kulliyatin yadrusu hamidun wa Amma hamidun fa huwa fi? Amma. Next question. Aina the Haba Abuka Ya Ahuka. Sorry, wa, yeah, wa akhuka. 
Aina zahaba abuka wa akhuka. Where did your father and brother go to? Okay, where did your father and brother go? Right? Amma, so the person answering, they will say, Amma, Abi. So say after me, Amma, Abi. Amma, Abi. Fahua. Zahaba. Ilal. Mustawu Sifa or Bilal Mustawus Mustawu Safi Mustawu Safi Bilal Mustawu Safi Right, so you said Amma Abi Fahua Right, Amma Abi Fahua Bilal Mustawu Safi Right, next one Wa Amma Ahi Bahua Ilal Saidaliati. So the first one, Mustawa Safi, is the clinic, and the Saidaliya is the pharmacy. All right. Pharmacy. All right. So Is that clear with everybody? The pattern or the, the structure? Amma fa. Amma fa. And you will see that many places in the Quran, right? You'll see that many places in the Quran. All right, the last exercise on this chapter, the last exercise, the Ashar. This is just something to take note of. It's not a major grammatical um, component, but it's just a way of, of speaking. All right? Just to show you different ways of expressing certain things, right? In this particular case, we show in how we can uh, describe something attributed to us but at the same time, it remains indefinite, indefinite, okay? So for example, if you say, um, my book, my book, my book would be definite. Why? Because book by itself would be indefinite unless, until and unless we attribute it to someone or something all right, that is definite, or we put the definite particle on it, so we can say the book, okay? Bring the book, right? Obviously, the person is speaking to should know which book you're talking about, right? You may have been speaking about it before, all right? So the parent asking the child, all right? Did the teacher give you, did the teacher give you your homework book back? Then you might say, bring the book. So the child knows which book is being spoken about as a definite item, right? The book, bring the book, right? Or the parent might say, bring your book. In that case, it's, it's, uh, it's definite and it's known which book is being spoken about, right? However, we can attribute it to, to someone and keep it indefinite. Keep it what? Indefinite by saying, for example, um, I lost a book of mine. I lost a book of mine. So you're attributing the book to me. It's not anybody else's book, but it's my book. But you're not defining which of your books is lost. All right? So I lost a book of mine. All right? So we saw that in the passage when the, the person said that he is staying with a relative of mine. He didn't specify which relative. He just said indefinitely, irrelative ir ir of mine. Okay? So let's see how that is phrased in a little more detail. So they, they come uh, contrasted here against, you know, um, a definite, uh, we attribute it to, um, to ourselves in a definite way. So, for example, you see here, 
Jaa, which means to arrive or to come. Jaa, akhi min Makkata. So say after me, Jaa. Jaa. Jaa means to arrive or to come. All right. Jaa, akhi. Min Makkata. Remember, mm -hmm. Makkah is one of the words that is mamu yourself. Mm -hmm. So therefore, when it is in the genitive case, it will take a fatha on the last letter and not a kasra. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we won't say min makkati, but, but rather we say min makkata. Mm -hmm. Good. So, ja'a akhi min makkata. Ja'a akhi so what does that mean? It means my brother arrived from Makkah. My brother arrived from Makkah. So let's see how that is contrasted against the other way of expressing that. We can say Ja'a Akun Li Min Makkata. So say after me. Ja'a Akun Li. So you see the difference here. So we're saying, Achun, a brother, is indefinite. You turn me in there, right? But yet at the same time, you attribute it to yourself by saying, Li, of mine, of mine. Achun, Li, min Makkata. Right? A brother of mine, right, arrived from Makkah. So what does it mean? In brackets here, the author put Ja'a Ahadun Ikhwan. Right? So one of my brothers arrived. Right? So it attributed you, but it's indefinite, not defined as to which one of the brothers. Okay? Let's look at the other example. The Habtu Li Ziyarati Sadiqi. The Habtu Li Ziyarati Sadiqi. So say after me. The hub to the Ziyarati Sadiqi. The hub to the Ziyarati Sadiqi. I went to visit my friend. The hub to the Ziyarati Sadiqi. I went to visit my friend. Let's see how it is changed up here now. We have the hub to the Ziyarati Sadiqi. The hub to I went to visit a friend, a friend, indefinite. I went to visit a friend of mine. I went to visit a friend of mine. And I'll see here. Askunu ma'a qaribi. Askunu ma'a qaribi. I live with my relative. I live with my relative. Okay? And of course, any passage we have here, Askunu ma'a qaribin li. Askunu ma'a qaribin li. I live with a relative of mine. I live with a relative of mine. Indefinite. Right? Any questions on this or the previous exercises? So today we reviewed the Past tense, present tense, master. Well, not all past tense, present tense, but just in terms of how you have to learn the past tense with the present tense and then the master. Right? Then we looked at the structure of the fa, uh, amma and the fa goes together. And then we looked at the attributing to someone without being, without making the word definite. It's remaining indefinite, all right? So we have the list of new words here. So let's go through it briefly. Al kalimatul jadida tu. Al kalimatul jadida. Al kalimatul jadida tu. Al kalimatul jadida tu. Right. So look here. They, they give us the past tense and the present tense. We learn them together. Okay. Shakana yaskunu. Shakara yashkuru. Shakara yashkuru. 
Nazala yan zilu. Nazala yan zilu. Bahatha yad hathu. Ta'ida yas adu. Ta'ida yas adu. Arafa ya'rifu. Mata yamutu. Mata yamutu. Nasitu. Right, so this is just one version of a verb, the English word whole verb nasitu, right? This means nasitu means I forgot, I forgot, past tense, right? So what does darasa means? He studied, past tense. Sakana, he lived or he resided, right? Yaskuno will be present tense, he resides or he lives. Shakara, is to be grateful or to be thankful or to thank. Shakara yashkuru, right? Nazala, well, we did that. Nazala is to descend or to come down. Bahatha is to, is to, to look, to search, right? Sa'ida is to, is to ascend. Sa'ida. Arafa is to know. Ya'rifu, he knows. Mata, to pass away, to die. Yamutu, he dies. Now see to I forgot, I forgot, right? Going on again. Uh, right, so now we have some nouns and their plurals. So here you have Qaribun. Qaribun means a relative. So the word Qaribun means near, all right? So you have Qaribun and Ba'idun, near and far. So Al Masjidu Qaribun min al bayt. The Masjid is close to the house. So Qarib means close, but the same word also means a relative, a relative, right? So Qaribun in this context means a relative, a cousin, an uncle, you know, nephew, a relative, okay? So Qaribun is a singular and the plural is Aqribau. So say that Qaribun Aqribau. So then you have, after that then, you have unwanun. Unwan means address, like the, the, the residential address, commercial address, the address for the particular location, right? So unwanun, unwanun, anawinu, unwanun, anawinu. Bitakatun, <laughs> Anybody know the halak? A baba, right? So the plural is halakuna. Mustaw safun. That's a clinic, right? Then you have saydaliyatun. It's a pharmacy. Aruzun. Aruzun is rice. Qadimun means coming or upcoming, right? So we could say, Al-Usbu' Al-Qadim. Al-Usbu' Al-Qadim. Usbu' means what? The week. So we say, Al-Usbu' Al-Qadimu. Then he's saying, um, uh, the, the coming week. The coming week. So when you finish class today, you say, um, Sanarakum, or we will see you, Fil usbu al qadim. We will see you next week, inshallah. So al qadim, the coming, right? And then you have khaylun, which means horses, right? And khul khuyulun, horses, right? So you have the word hisan for horse, and you also have khaylun, khaylun, right? In Surah Ali Imran, verse fourteen. 
Surah Ali Imran, verse 14. So you all could do that for homework. Check Surah Ali Imran, chapter number 3, verse 14. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about certain things which are, you know, made attractive or beautified for people of this world. And then he ends the verse by saying these are only mata uh, dunya, that they are only provisions of this world. So one of the things he listed is the khailun. Right, branded horses. Right, so this is the end of chapter 11. We go straight into chapter 12. Straight into chapter 12. Any questions or comments before we start chapter 12? We just have a few minutes again before the end of class today. We will just read through this, inshallah. And next week we'll pick up on it again, read through it, and then do the explanation, inshallah. Questions? All right, so then the question we go straight into chapter twelve. So say after me, uh, or rather. Just follow in your books and listen, okay? Follow in the books and listen. And next week, inshallah, you all will get a chance to, you all will get a chance to. So read after me, right? So just follow inshallah, and listen carefully. Bismillah. Ad-Darusuthaniya Ashara. Adarusuthaniya Ashara. Hamidun Mada Taf Alina Ya Umma Hamida. Sorry, Umma Ahmada. Hamidun Mada Taf Alina Ya Umma Ahmadu. Then Hamidun Mada Taf Alina Ya Umma Ahmadu Ahmada. Then, Hamidun, Mada Taf Alina, Ya Umma Ahmada. Umma Ahmada. So then we go into the conversation again. Ummu Ahmad. Ummu Ahmada. Ummu Ahmada. Notice, up here we said what? Ya Umma Ahmada. And here we are saying Ummu Ahmada. All right, we go through the explanation of that next week, inshallah. So, Ummu Ahmada, what does she say? Abhathu. Abhathu anid dawai alladhi akhaztuhu min al mustashfa amsi. Again, Ummu Ahmada, Abhathu. عن الدواء الذي أخذته من المستشفى أمس أبحث عن الدواء الذي أخذته من المستشفى أمس حامد هو على المكتب هو على المكتب في غرفتي هو هو على المكتب في غرفتي كيف حالك اليوم كيف حالك اليوم لعلك اليوم أحسن لعلك اليوم أحسن كان حامد هو على المكتب في غرفتي كيف حالك يا كيف حالك اليوم كيف حالك اليوم لعلك اليوم أحسن لعلك اليوم أحسن أم حامدة سوري أم أحمدة أم أحمدة نعم أنا اليوم أحسن نعم أنا اليوم أحسن 
Walhamdulillah. Kan? Naam. Ana al-yawma ahsanu. Walhamdulillah. One more time. Naam. Ana al-yawma ahsanu. Walhamdulillah. Hamidun. Mata. Mata means what again? When. When. Mata tazhabina ila al-mustashfa. Mata tazhabina ila al-mustashfa. Mata tazhabina ila al-mustashfa. Ummu Ahmada. Ummu Ahmada. Sa'adhabu ba'da sa'atin. Sa'adhabu ba'da sa'atin insha'Allah. سأذهب بعد ساعة إن شاء الله حامد مع من تذهبين مع من تذهبين أم أحمد سأذهب مع أحمد سأذهب مع أحمد حامد أتعرفين 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 الطبيبة أتعرفين الطبيبة التي ذهبت إليها أمس التي ذهبت إليها أمس أم أحمد نعم عارف أعرفها نعم عارفها اسمها الدكتورة سعاد اسمها الدكتورة سعاد يقولون إنها أحسن طبيبة في المستشفى Let's read over that line again. Naam, a'rifuha. Ismuha al-doktoratu su'adu. Yaquluna innaha ahsanu tabibatin fil mustashfa. Hamidun. Mada taf'aluna ya abanai? ماذا تفعلون يا أبنائي؟ الأبناء نكتب الواجبات نكتب الواجبات حامد أتفهمون الدروس جيدا؟ أتفهمون الدروس جيدا؟ أتفهمون الدروس جيدا؟ right, so we stop there today. This lesson is only two pages long. This page and the next page to come. All right. إن شاء الله تعالى we will continue في الأسبوع القادم. ما معنى الأسبوع القادم؟ ما معنى الأسبوع القادم؟ ما معنى الأسبوع القادم؟ نبدي نبدي القادم من ذا
سنراكم في الأسبوع القادم. I will see you all next week. الأسبوع means week and القادم means coming or next. Okay. Remember the person who said, "Sanzilu fil mahatta al qadim." I will exit or descend or come off at the next station, the next stop. Okay. So if I say, "Sanarakum fil usbu al qadim," insha Allah, I will see or we will see you all next week, insha Allah. Right. سأراكم في الأسبوع القادم. هل يوجد هل توجد سؤال هل توجد سؤال is there a question طيب Let's end with the Fakafara Surah Al As. Awadu Billahi Min Shaitan Al Rajim. Sunnah Rahman Rahim Al As. Inna Al Insan La Fi Fasl. Illa Al Adina Amanu Wa Amil Salihat. Tawasab Al Haqq Wa Tawasab. Assalamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh.